Hello everyone, I hope you're doing really well and thank you so much for joining me in this video. I'm really excited today for a couple of reasons. The primary reason is that I'm off to attempt to photograph one of my favourite birds. And that bird is the osprey. It's a bird I've got great admiration for. Uh, its resilience and determination is something that I'm constantly in admiration of. I really, really enjoy watching them and photographing them. Being able to photograph them is a bonus too. So I'm really excited about that. That's the primary reason. The second reason is that I'm out with a new lens today. Uh, I've bought a new lens for my Nikon Z8 and I'll talk about that in a little while as the video progresses. But for now, I need to make some progress. So I'll head on a bit and then I'll stop, get the camera out again and I'm going to discuss how I'm approaching today in terms of photographing the Ospreys and I'll talk a little bit about the gear I'm going to be using as well. So I'm really excited and I hope you enjoy this video. So I've made a bit more progress and I still have a long way to go but I thought just now before I actually get to the area that I need to be in, I talk a little bit about my approach, how I think about going to photograph these birds today, and also about the gear that I'm going to be using in the new lens. So the first thing that I would like to uh, discuss is that I am very confident I can arrive at where I need to be, do what I need to do today, take some photographs and so on, and leave without the bird or birds, depending how many there are, even knowing that I've been there. That is my ultimate goal, that is my priority today. I would be genuinely upset if I thought I was affecting the birds in any way, disturbing them, uh, causing them to alter their behaviour, causing them to move off any perches that they're on and so on. So that is vital to me and I'm completely confident due to knowing the area, having been here and so on, that I can do that. If I thought I was in any way disturbing them, I'd immediately leave and the video would be over. But I know that won't happen. I'm, I'm very confident of that. So the next thing I want to talk about is the gear that I'm going to be using in the new lens. So I'll be using my Nikon Z8 camera, which will do the job absolutely fine. I'm hoping to photograph these birds primarily perched, unless there's something interesting going on. And the lens that I'm going to be using, my new lens, is the Nikon Z 800mm lens. Um, it's a lens I've been thinking about purchasing for quite a while. You may have seen some of my other videos on my channel, where for the first few months I was trying to get used to the Z8, and I was using the Z 100-400mm to lens. And I've always said, I'll potentially be buying another lens. So there was various options and that's the one that I decided to go for. For a number of reasons, but it's going to be very useful today. Today my intention is to fully respect these Osprey and keep a long, long distance from them and be completely concealed and they're not going to know I'm there. So that was one of the primary factors I bought this lens is that I can be further back from my subjects and and cause hopefully no disturbance to wildlife. Uh, that's what I ultimately aim for. So I'll be using the 800mm lens, I'll be keeping a long distance. I'm not after frame filling shots of the Osprey today. They'll be smaller in the frame but hopefully nicely composed images showing a bit of the environment and so on. I may also crop the images. Um, I've got my teleconverter with me, so I could be shooting at well over 1000 millimeters and cropping on top of that at times. I'll be using a combination of things, so it should hopefully give you some idea that I'm going to be keeping my distance from these birds. Of course, if one unexpectedly comes closer and it doesn't see me and I'm not going to disturb it, I'll get a larger image but I'm not going to push and push and try and get closer and closer to these birds. I definitely could do that, but yeah, the wildlife has to come first and I don't want to do that. So I'll be happy with the images I get today, hopefully, if I see the birds. So I think that basically covers my approach, the new gear. I'm really excited to use it, so I need to head on and uh, see if I can actually find the ospreys today.
first of all, let me apologise if the camera angle seems a little bit strange. I'm in quite a precarious position at the moment and I need to think about maintaining cover because I am where I want to start my photography from today. So my camera is looking in the direction uh, of where I'm hoping to photograph the osprey. I can see a number of positions from here which I'm hopeful that it will land on. Now I can hear them in the area but there's none in the area from which I want to take photographs. But it's a relief to have reached the spot and get everything set up and be prepared. Um, a lot of it won't show in the video footage today but I'm carrying an awful lot of gear with me and uh, this lens, the 800mm, is light for what it is and I'm used to carrying a camera in multiple lenses that weigh much, much, much more than this with my Z8 on it but the fact I'm carrying a, a couple of tripods, video equipment, multiple spare batteries for this camera, that camera, microphones, uh, clothing because the weather forecast has been difficult to predict. I was half expecting rain and there is a lot of grey cloud and not little bits of sunlight so I'm very confused as is the weather to what the weather is actually going to do. But uh, yeah, carrying a lot of gear, so glad to get it off my back and uh, be prepared. I can hear the osprey, but as I said, I'm focusing at the moment in a very specific area and I just need to wait and hope the birds land here. So I was just about to talk a little bit about this lens when an osprey has appeared in front of me and it's on one of the trees that I was hoping to photograph it on but unfortunately the light is not ideal um, it's not quite in the correct position yet for me, the sun and also it's coming and going so at times it's probably it's quite dull at the moment the sun is hitting me and it looks bright and then it gets very overcast but actually on the area that I'm photographing the sun is not actually getting there yet. So the light is terrible, um, it's almost a silhouette at times but I will record some video uh, just to let you see what I'm looking at, have a look at the osprey and hopefully the sun will become free of all these imposing clouds that are overhead and I might get some light on the tree and the osprey itself if it hangs around. It may come and go, um, it's going to take a while for the light to get good I think, but um, I'm delighted I've seen it. I'm quite a long distance from it, it's not even looked in my direction, it doesn't know I'm here. Uh, with the wind direction I can speak quite freely uh, at the moment if it stays there and doesn't come closer. So yeah, things are looking hopeful. So the light at the moment is incredibly frustrating, it's incredibly changeable. So I thought I'd just take a, a short moment to talk about the Nikon Z 800mm lens that I'm using. So I've had this lens for a little while, uh, it's quite new to me and I've taken many test shots, been out and used it for a while and uh, yeah it's, a, it's clear to me it's a fantastic lens, I've no regrets at all over my purchase. Uh, what I wanted to just quickly talk about is that when you're using a focal length such as this, 800 millimeters, and on other camera systems I've used uh, lenses 
with a full frame equivalent focal length even longer than this. Um, it's just to make an obvious point, but don't always expect that whatever you're photographing is going to be big enough in the frame to your taste. Um, that's not the case at all. We can still be too far away from wildlife and uh, it's simply not possible for us to get into the positions that we need to be to get the shot we want. And hopefully a lot of the times we're just respecting the wildlife and keeping our distance. So uh, 800 millimeters sounds extreme. Uh, when I put on a teleconverter, it goes over a thousand. And uh, you know, it, it sounds incredibly long and that you're suddenly going to get really large uh, birds and everything that you're photographing. That's not always going to be the case. It's certainly going to help but you still need to use field craft and have knowledge of your subject and so on. But it's important to point out as well that wildlife photography is not all about getting your subject large in the frame. Many times I prefer the subject quite small in the frame. It really depends on what I'm photographing, the situation, uh, perhaps even the light and so on. So just a few things about this lens. Uh, also, Longer focal lengths introduce other issues. Um, depending on your gear, your technique and so on, it can be harder to get sharp images. You have to be aware of various atmospheric conditions that you could be shooting through. So uh, they're not a solution to guarantee wonderful wildlife images every time you're out. But they are a fantastic tool uh, if used correctly in the appropriate situations. But Fingers crossed this light is going to improve and get a bit more consistent. I'm just waiting on the, the light, uh, the sun to change position and the quality of the light to get a bit better. So yeah, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. So I left my camera in position, I've moved just a little bit to get a look at the osprey from a different angle. It's still on this tree. Uh, the light is out at the moment, but there's still quite a lot of clouds that it could go behind. Um, it can't see me or hear me here at all. I'm looking through a very small gap uh, up at where it's situated. But it's really nice just to take time away from the photography take out some binoculars and just watch the wildlife. Um, wildlife photography really fascinates me and it keeps my interest. Sometimes you go out, there's things happening all around. You don't know what to shoot first. Uh, at other times, quite often, it's a waiting game and a very, very long waiting game to, to get everything to align, uh, to finally get the image that you want and often it takes repeated visits as well. But I'm really enjoying just taking some time away from the camera, having a look at the osprey and just watching its behavior. Um, it's not up to anything particularly interesting or unusual. It's looking around, doing a little bit of pruning. Uh, it's done its toilet duties and uh, I think it's just enjoying the little bits of sunshine that we're getting. But yeah, if it keeps like this and the clouds thin out a bit, it could be a really nice sunny day. So we'll see what happens.
a lot of time has passed and I thought I would just give an update on what's been happening. Uh, the tree has been empty, the tree that I've been concentrating on has been empty for quite a while and the light has been very difficult from a photography point of view. There's been a lot of very poor light, some moments of good light, but they have been few and far between and time really is moving on. Uh, as often is the case with wildlife, you're so alert watching what's going on, even if there's not much happening, um, time seems to pass very quickly for me. So we're getting towards the end of the light for today. But because there was nothing happening, I decided to have a little walk around Han Held uh, some, some time ago. And I was going to have a look at some other spots where I knew they could be. There wasn't much happening there either. And just as I was getting back to the area on which I've been concentrating, I could see two osprey in the tree. Uh, fortunately, there was a little bit of light out at the time. So I quickly took the shot handheld. Um, not from the same position where I've been set up with my tripod, but I was getting close to being back in that area. So I think I got a decent shot, certainly a nice memory. Uh, the other thing to give an update on is, you may see them, you may not, but the midges, there's a couple crawling on my hand there. They are extremely annoying. They're all over my camera equipment, all in the air, all over me. I've been bitten multiple times. Uh, even though I've got insect repellent on, it's doing a bit of a job, but not as good a job as I would like. They've still bitten me a few times. So yeah, the challenges of wildlife photography, but it's been fantastic to see the osprey and uh, the light's not quite gone yet, but there's just so many huge clouds. The, for the weather forecast has been incorrect as it often is, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm going to show a few more photographs and some video just in a few seconds but for my photography that's going to be it for today. There's a beautiful sunset happening however it's now so low in the sky that the areas that I want to photograph are basically on their last light of the day and the light levels are just dropping so they're going to be uh, very dimly lit soon so the photography is over. Um, it's been a challenge with these very annoying midges. The light's been very difficult today and as always it's not a complaint but filming these videos, carrying all the, the heavy gear and so on and trying to do photography at the same time is challenging. But I'm so glad I've been out tonight. It's been absolutely fantastic to see the osprey. Hopefully got a few nice uh, decent images which you'll have enjoyed seeing and there's a few more going to come and seeing some video of the osprey as well. So yeah, it's been really great to be out. A really nice evening apart from the challenges and uh, fantastic to see these amazing birds.
So I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, there'll be lots more wildlife content coming on it as I have time. Thank you so much and I will hopefully see you in my next one.